I'd like to show how I've been cleaning up the pages of the Equinox that I scanned. And for the most part, I've recorded these actions into macros in uh, Adobe Photoshop. And so I don't have to run them manually each time, but I thought I'd record um, just a manual run through of it to show exactly what I'm doing on each step. And th so the goal here is to take a scanned image of um, the page of a first edition Equinox and take it and um, remove the background and increase the contrast of the black lettering. And so, so we'll, we'll be left with just a, a black on white page that can be printed out and look very nice um, when you actually print it out on your home printer. So we'll begin by opening up just um, up the next page that I was going to do. Um, looks here, page 57. I'm well into the, um, uh, the Voice of the Silence. So almost done with 3.1. But anyways, so we begin by um, cropping and uh, aligning the image to exactly where we want it to be. And so first off, we'll take the crop tool and get just a little bit around the text, you know, the complete text that we want. Um, and then we're gonna zoom way in until we get a reasonable amount. Now the, the crop tool has this really nice uh, straighten tool that you can use. You can also use it uh, from the ruler, but the, it's nice to just do it in one pass. And so I've been just grabbing the bottom of a flat letter and then stretching it all the way to another flat letter, checking it out. And as you can see, that sort of aligned the text and will make it look nice when we zoom in. Um, so we zoom out, we complete the crop, and so that crops it. And just double check here, it looks like all the stuff is more or less aligned. I mean, we're getting we're getting pretty close. It's it's not going to be perfect, but um, you know maybe a typeset version could be in the in the future. So the next step is to convert the image to CMYK mode, and this will allow us to adjust the levels of just the black of the image. We don't really care so much yet about, you know, we're going to discard all the color information later, but we want to make sure that all the black information comes through nicely. And I've just been setting this to, I mean, if you're doing this on your own, you can do auto, but I've just been um, defaulting to uh, 140 by 240 on this. And as you can see, uh, it changes the black so you know so this would it could just be nice just to have this on its own um, just if you want to read it you know in the natural scan but um, uh, so anyway so from normal to black now the next stage we're gonna do is convert it to grayscale so we're now now that we've up the black we're just gonna bring it to grayscale and um, uh, do the levels adjustment again. And so now we've only got the one channel there. And as we can see uh, from the little input levels, um, this big spike here is actually the uh, background of the page. So that's gonna be the, the paper texture. And um, to get around that, I've just been defaulting to 156 and so this little arrow has moved over here so it's going to cut all that background noise out um, but then uh, to make sure we've got the best blacks out of this as well uh, we're just gonna up this to 100 and that gives us a nice uh, black and white contrast so we click OK um, then sometimes I'll go in check it out a little bit if there's uh, little specks well Actually, uh, one stage I forgot is we can go in here and they've actually got a really nice um, uh, dust and scratch filter. 
And so applying this, um, two pixels is too much. Um, I've just been doing a radius of one pixel and that, uh, that gets rid of most of the dust and scratches. As we can see, it's removed that fairly well, but um, it's also getting some other little ticks here and there. This will also fill in the um, uh, some of the black around the lettering. Um, it it kind of rounds the lettering a little bit, so we don't want to use we don't want to do two pixels, but um, it will fill in any place where the ink's been sort of worn away. Uh, inside the black of the letters but it also cleans up anything that was left over like these little tick marks and that from when we did the um, the severe leveling so we'll be okay with that um, and so then anything that's left over can just be sort of removed but as you can see it's for the most part it's pretty nice and clean uh, one of the ways that you can tell if it's been cleaned properly. Uh, so the, the next part I'll do is um, do a trim and this will kind of trim it down to just the text itself. And so if we still see a large margin there, usually then that means there's another little bit that uh, is kind of left over. And sometimes I'll just go in there and clean up some of these letters a little bit if I see them. Um, and then, so we'll run the, the trim again and that uh, got rid of that. And this is just so that we get the correct spacing on on the margins. Um, I'll take this and trim again. Okay, and how I've been running the margins um, uh, for any page that has a number is um, adding a bottom margin from starting where the number is. I mean, it's not going to be perfectly consistent, but it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so we take a canvas size, um, start at the top, make sure we've got the, the relative fixed, and then add in 470 pixels at the bottom. And so this, this is that 600 DPI, so that gives us... Oops. <laughs> Let's do height about that. So this gives us a nice, nice wide margin. The the margins in the book itself are quite wide, and I don't think uh, it's useful to have those when you know, especially when most people are going to be printing this out uh, from a PDF, and um, it would just be an unnecessary uh, waste of space in that case. Um, so now that we've added that margin, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the margins. And I've just been uh, defaulting to a total 4,000 pixels by 5450. Um, and so that gives us the rest of the page. And there you have it. That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing for every uh, page of the Equinox. And it should make um, uh, a nice set of PDFs that everybody can print out without wasting too much ink from their home printer. Thank you very much.